Okay, I'm going to try to answer this question. Why do objects with different weights fall at the same rate? Right? Take a heavy object and a light object. Imagine a heavy book and a pencil. You hold them at the same height, you release them at the same time, and they'll both hit the ground at exactly the same time. They'll be speeding up as they fall. Both of them will speed up at the same rate. They'll have the same rate of, of acceleration. Their velocity will increase at the same rate, but they'll both be increasing at the same rate. They'll hit the ground at the same time. And it's kind of surprising that that actually happens. I mean, it might have been intuitive to think that the heavy object would hit the ground before the lighter object. In fact, that was the common belief that goes all the way back to Aristotle. Um, that's what he believed. And uh, it's pretty amazing, right, the smart person like Aristotle to have such a completely wrong idea about something that was so easy to actually go and check, to actually check this. And, uh, and this is what Galileo did. There's the famous story of Galileo standing at the top of the Leaning Tower of Pisa and holding two different weight objects and dropping them at the same time and then showing that they hit the ground at the same time and that was really kind of the beginning of actually doing real science is actually just go out and say hey everybody look look at the actual evidence they actually hit the ground at the same time uh, and uh, and and so there there was the the beginning of, of experimental science and then to be able to put that uh, that fact into mathematical terms. This is what what Newton was able to do, and and so that's what you see here on the screen. I'm going to answer this question: Why do objects with different weights fall at the same rate? And I'm going to use two formulas from Newton. The one that you see on the left, this is Newton's second law of motion. The F here in the equation is the force that acts on a moving object, and M here in this equation is the mass of that object and A is the acceleration of the object that's the rate at which its velocity is changing so that acceleration is a measure of the of the of the motion the movement of that object and over on the right side of the screen I've got Newton's law of gravitation um, this F here is the force of gravity G is a constant a gravitational constant this number uh, will depend on what units you measure in so it, but regardless it's a it's a constant of nature that would only be different depending on what units we happen to be measured whether we're measuring in meters or in uh, feet or or uh, how we measure mass and, and all those uh, different measurements will will require uh, using a different constant but it's a constant of nature that just comes from experimental evidence um, here we have Me, which is the mass of the Earth, and the M here on this equation is the is the mass of the, of, a, of another object uh, that that uh, is in a gravitational field. So it would be in this case the mass of the object that you that, that's falling, the, the mass of the falling object, and then D is the distance of that object from the Earth. Now, if you want to get technical about it, it's actually to the center of mass of the Earth, which is actually the center of the Earth. Uh, but generally, when we do questions like this, we're talking about dropping things. Uh, we're near to the surface of the Earth. Um, this formula applies to satellites that are far from the surface of the Earth. Uh, and, uh, and so um, we can use this to calculate the force of gravity on those objects as well. Um, so now, now getting back to my question, what I'm going to do is this really very simple and yet really incredibly profound idea that says, well, if it's gravity that's actually causing the motion, let's take the force that's acting on a moving object and assume that that's actually gravity. So make these two equal. All right, so let me clear some space so I can actually do that. Okay, so now what, I, what I'm going to do is say, well, if it's gravity that's causing the motion, then the force that's acting on the object uh, is the force of gravity, then F is the same in both expressions here, in both equations, and so I'll equate these two expressions. I'll say MA equals that gravitational constant times the mass of the Earth times the mass of the falling object divided by the distance that object is from the Earth squared. And here's the incredibly profound and really simple at the same time uh, step. If the mass of the object that's falling is the same as the mass in the calculation for the gravity, then I can divide both sides of this equation 
by the by the value by the by the mass of the object divide both sides by m simple algebra cancel divide both sides by the same thing that cancels and that's where this result comes from i'll say that the acceleration uh, on the object the acceleration that actually makes that object uh, move is only this gravitational constant times the mass of the earth divided by the distance that object is from the earth okay and that's it and that's that's going to be uh, as long as you're close to the surface of the earth then the, if the distance doesn't change very much we can call this a constant now we have two different constants that we use um, uh, often we'll use 9.8 for uh, the acceleration on an object due to gravity uh, acceleration on a falling object we'll use 9.8 uh, meters per second squared or we'll use 32 uh, or or we'll use 32 feet per second squared okay so here now I'm gonna try to sum up uh, and give an answer to that question uh, why do objects with different weights fall at the same rate and my answer is when the force of gravity is applied to Newton's second law of motion the mass of the falling object cancels from both sides of that resulting equation and this results in an acceleration for that falling object that depends only on the distance that object is from the earth uh, and that's what these values are here these are what we call constants of, of acceleration due to gravity near the surface of the earth um, and so it didn't matter what the mass was because if the force is what's causing the motion the force of gravity is what's causing the motion and I assume that that mass is the same on both sides of this equation that mass of the object is the same in both of these calculations then they're going to cancel out it doesn't matter whether it was a heavy object or a light object it's gone from the equation and the acceleration on every object is the same and so that's the answer to the question